Tuberculosis is a serious bacterial infection caused by a group of bacteria known as Mycobacterium tuberculosis complex. It is characterized by the presence of a chronic granulomatous inflammatory reaction. In about 99% of cases, the causative agent is Mycobacterium tuberculosis, which is a rod-shaped, aerobic intracellular pathogen. Mycobacterium bovis is known to cause oropharyngeal and intestinal tuberculosis, but it is rarely seen now. So, in this video I will give you an overview of tuberculosis infection. If you are looking for a more detailed video on tuberculosis, follow the link in the description to watch my previous video on tuberculosis. Mycobacterium tuberculosis has the ability to survive and multiply inside the macrophages by avoiding lysosomal killing. It is the major virulence factor of the organism. Human is the natural reservoir of Mycobacterium tuberculosis. The infection is primarily transmitted via aerosol transmission. The organism primarily infects the lungs. But it can cause disease in any other organ in the body, including the liver, intestines, kidneys, bones, and brain. HIV infection is a serious risk factor for tuberculosis because its pathogenesis depends upon the host immune response. Other risk factors include alcoholism, immunosuppressive therapy, systemic diseases like diabetes mellitus, recent surgery, and smoking. In addition, workers in healthcare facilities, such as doctors, nurses, and laboratory workers, are also at high risk of developing tuberculosis. According to the pathogenesis, there are two types of tuberculosis. Primary tuberculosis occurs in a person who has no previous exposure to the organism. And secondary, or post-primary TB, occurs in patients who has previously exposed to the organism. Spectrum of the disease depends upon the host immune response against Mycobacterium tuberculosis. Inactive tuberculosis, bacteria are multiplying within the host. If the multiplying bacteria affect only the lungs, it is called pulmonary tuberculosis. If the multiplying bacteria affect the organs other than lungs, it is known as extrapulmonary tuberculosis. The other type of active TB is miliary tuberculosis. In miliary TB, Bacteria spread via lymphatics and bloodstream to other organs, causing lesions which appear like millet seeds, as you can see in this picture. It is important to note that miliary TB is different from extrapulmonary tuberculosis. Its infectivity is extremely high with high bacterial load. And it can be fatal if left untreated. Latent TB is caused by reactivation of dormant bacteria when the host immunity drops. And during the dormant period, the person is entirely asymptomatic. Mycobacterium tuberculosis enters the lungs through inhaled air. Then they are engulfed by the alveolar macrophages. As already mentioned, Mycobacterium tuberculosis has the ability to survive within the macrophages. While surviving, they multiply within the macrophages during the first three weeks of infection. Then they spread to the other parts of the body via lymphatics and bloodstream. At this point, most people are asymptomatic or they have a mild flu-like illness. After bacteria reach the lymph nodes, macrophage processes mycobacterial antigens and present them to the T lymphocytes. This usually happens after about three weeks from the initial infection. So as a result of antigen presentation, T cells get activated and produce various cytokines that cause activation of macrophages and other lymphocytes. In immunocompetent hosts, Activated macrophages kill bacteria by various mechanisms and halt the infection. At the same time, these macrophages secrete tumor necrosis factor, which induces the formation of granulomatous lesions with subsequent tissue destruction and fibrosis. This granuloma formation in tuberculosis is a good example for a type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. Now let's discuss about the clinical presentation of tuberculosis. Persistent, chronic cough is the predominant symptom in tuberculosis patients. And they have a remittent, low-grade fever, which appears late in the afternoon and fades out by night. Patient develops anorexia due to the inhibitory effects of cytokines on the hypothalamus. And, long-term anorexia causes loss of weight over time. 
they also develop progressive fatigue due to the reduced oxygen uptake by the lungs. And patient experiences heavy night sweats. With progressive pulmonary involvement, the amount of sputum increases. Hemoptysis, or coughing up blood, indicates severe disease. And some people experience a pleuritic-type chest pain, which suggests the involvement of pleural surfaces. Diagnosis of tuberculosis is primarily based on the patient's history, clinical presentation, and the initial radiographic findings. Ask about the contact history and physical status, such as weight, before the commencement of cough. If tuberculosis is suspected, recommend a chest X-ray to reveal the white-colored consolidation in the lungs. This is a chest X-ray of a healthy lung. These three X-ray images are of three tuberculosis patients. Appreciate the white-colored consolidation in the lungs. However, ultimately, tubercle bacilli should be identified. For this, you can use microscopy for the direct visualization of acid-fast bacilli. However, this is not specific for Mycobacterium tuberculosis. Mycobacterial culture is more specific for the detection of tubercle bacilli, but it takes a long time as Mycobacterium tuberculosis grows very slowly. PCR test enables the rapid detection of Mycobacterial DNA, as well as antibiotic-resistant genes. For the treatment of tuberculosis, more specific, anti-tuberculosis drugs are indicated. However, the use of these drugs is highly supervised and variable according to the antibiotic resistance pattern in a particular geographic region. So, it is extremely important to follow the local guidelines for the management of tuberculosis. These anti-tuberculosis drugs include isoniazid, rifampicin, pyrazinamide, and ethambutal.